Hello and welcome to Sports Fan Entertainment and it is time for my NFL Week 14 picks and predictions. We came back last week and what a week we had. I went 12 and 4 for my straight up picks. Spitting hot fire. No one believed me that the Chargers were going to go to Pittsburgh and win on Sunday night. They did it. Not many believed that the Giants were going to beat the Bears. I told you both of those. Look out. For what I'm about to tell you this upcoming week. So with that said, let's start with the Thursday night football game as we have the Tennessee Titans hosting the Jacksonville Jaguars. My Tennessee Titans are still alive. They're not well, but they're still alive and they have an opportunity to have a winning record once again. Will they get it done? I do say so. Now, yes, the Jacksonville Jaguars looked better last week. They were able to beat the Colts 6-0. But you're probably not going to win like that every week. And now they're going on the road. They're facing a Tennessee team against which they have struggled over the past number of seasons. They haven't beat the Titans in over 700 days. I expect that straight to continue in prime time. Marcus Mariota is Marcus Mariota at his best, giving the Titans to win this game in Tennessee. Next game, we have the New York Jets. They're time in Buffalo taking on the Buffalo Bills. Sam Darnold is expected to return for this football game. And I think he'll make an impact. Josh McC Count. Yeah, he looks about done. But man, I was ready to pick the Jets to win this game. And then I remembered, oh, wait a minute. Didn't the Bills beat the Jets 41 to 10 just a number of weeks ago? Now, I know things change, especially within the division. But man, coming from that to now beating them in Buffalo, I just can't pick that. I wanted to, but I just can't do it. Give me the Bills to win and what's a closer game, but still a Bills victory. Next game, we have the Atlanta Falcons. They're trying to Green Bay, taking on the Green Bay Packers. And man, there is trouble in Green Bay as Mike McCarthy is now out as head coach. Joe Philbin will be taking, uh, taking over as the new head coach for the Green Bay Packers. Aaron Rodgers is wearing a mustache. Things are not good in Green Bay. Okay, what a weird mustache indeed. Jesus, he looks like Clint Eastwood or something. I don't know what he looks like. He's starting to look like Andy Reid. Right? He looks ridiculous. So with that said, who's going to win this game? Because the Falcons are certainly struggling. I mean, they're not the team I predicted uh, to go to the NFC Championship. That is for sure. What a horrible prediction by me. I don't know who I want to pick here. Um, I'm going to pick Green Bay. You know, they're in Green Bay. And perhaps, you know, with Mike McCarthy being thrown out of the door, they're going to have some sort of resurgence here. But, man, I, I don't really want to pick either one of these teams. So just give me the home team. That's usually a good strategy to take. Next, give me the New England Patriots. Time to Miami. Taking on the Miami Dolphins. And people do not sleep on this game. You know, Ryan. Ryan Tannehill is back for the Miami Dolphins, and this Dolphins team has shown the propensity. They've shown the ability to beat and upset the New England Patriots in Miami with Ryan Tannehill at the helm. I've seen them do this, or at the very least, compete and have a chance to win the game late in the game in the fourth quarter. I see the Patriots being favored by like seven and a half points in this game. We're going to discuss that later. For this game, though, okay, can the Dolphins get it done? I'm not going to say that. I do have my eyes on it. Okay, I really do because then the Patriots have struggled in Miami. But I do think the Patriots will get it done, though, because they are getting in stride once again. They've put that Tennessee loss behind them. They're getting going. They're, they're starting to see the potential of having that number one overall seed that is still in their sight. So I think they won't slip up here. But again, they have in the past, and they could again here look out for this football game. Next game, Baltimore Ravens. They're time to Kansas City taking on the Kansas City Chiefs. And look out for this game as well. Although I still do not have faith in Lamar Jackson long term. I told you short term. He's going to run the ball a lot. Okay, and he's going to be able to do some things. But you saw last week that got him in the concussion protocol. And I believe he's going to play in this game. Um, but even if he doesn't, even Robert Griffin III, I feel like this is a guy that's going to be able to have success against the Chiefs defense. The Chiefs do not have a good defense. Even the Oakland Raiders and their their absolutely dead offense was still able to put up over 30 points in last week's contest against Kansas City Chiefs. Man, they, their defense is just ridiculous. Ridiculously awful. So with us, you need to look out for the Ravens to potential in this game. But um, these are still the Kansas City Chiefs. This game is in Kansas City, and we are now in December. And it's very hard to beat Kansas City in December, especially with Patrick Mahomes continuing his hot streak. That boy is up to 41 passing touchdowns on the season. He still has a chance to break the all-time record. I don't think he will, but he still has a hell of a chance. And he's looking more and more like the MVP. Give me the Kansas City Chiefs to win this game in Kansas City. Next game, you have the Indianapolis Colts. They're traveling to Houston, taking on the Houston Texans. 
All right, well, I begged, okay? I went to the devil, okay? I went down to Jacksonville, and I asked the devil, please, can you guys beat the Indianapolis Colts for me? And they did it, okay? I sold my soul to the devil. I did it. I was rooting for the Jacksonville Jaguars last week. I don't know who I'm going to root for here. Um, I really don't know because the Titans don't really have a chance to win the division, so I should probably give up that pipe dream and root for the Texans. That way the Colts can get off of our backs a little bit. You know, so that's probably what I'm going to root for. So, again, okay, I'm going to make another another trip to go to the devil this one in Houston okay I'm gonna ask Deshaun Watson defraud Watson my boy okay you're my boy you know I've always loved you man beat the Colts for me man and I think he will you know this team has won nine straight games they don't appear to be slowing down anytime soon they're a very dominant win last week against the Cleveland Browns in Houston I'm expecting that to continue give me the Texans to win this game at home next game we have the New York Giants at the Washington Redskins and man, Washington Redskins fans. I mean, I just, I can't believe this, man. I mean, are you kidding me? I mean, after Alex Smith goes down for breaking his ankle or whatever he broke, man, he broke something, okay, to coming like a, what, a week or two later, Colt McCoy, he is now done for the season as well. And now we are talking about the Sanchez, Mark Sanchez, Mr. Butt Fumble, now Mr. Butt Recovery himself. He is now gallivanting and he is not going to be riding in on horseback trying to save this season for the Washington Redskins. How dare me say that the Redskins were still going to win this division in my midseason predictions because that ain't happening. They're not even going to win this game to me. I see the Giants going to Washington and getting it done. They're going to win some games here down the stretch of the Giants. I just hope it's not against my Tennessee Titans in about two weeks. But for this game, I do think the Giants get it done and they go to Washington and beat Mark Sanchez. Okay, that's not a tall task indeed. Next game, we have the Carolina Panthers at the Cleveland Browns. The Browns disappointed me last week, okay? I had them covering against the Texans. They couldn't do so. Baker Mayfield struggled, had possibly his worst game as a professional. I think he will bounce back. And the Carolina Panthers, they've lost four straight games after starting 6-2, and two, looking so good, being on pace for 12-4. and four. They're now on pace for 8-8. Eight and eight. And really, when you consider the losing streak, they may be on pace for 7-9 and nine right now. It's so bad in Carolina. And I expect those problems to continue, man. They've fallen. I'm not sure if they're going to get up. They're going to get a win or two to end the season. But, man, I just think they're they're down in the dumps. You've seen them on the road have that horrible loss at Pittsburgh. I guess it was a Thursday night, but a horrible loss there. And losing to Tampa Bay on the road, that wasn't a good look. On the road again here, I have them losing to the Cleveland Browns. New Orleans Saints at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Can the Saints avenge their week one loss? Remember, the Saints lost to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers week one. Yes. Now, the SL is Ryan Fitzpatrick led Bucks team, but wait a minute. Okay, wait a minute. Beep, beep, beep. Jameis Winston is alive. Okay, he's back from his coma. My boy, Jameis Winston. I still have faith in Jameis Winston despite all the BS he's done. And I'm tired of defending him, but I tell you, he can play. This guy has talent and he's displaying it now. Can he continue? To display in this game, I think he will. But I think ultimately the Saints will get it done because, man, they have to be just feeding, just wanting a win after their loss last week to the Dallas Cowboys on Thursday Night Football, the most watched Thursday Night Football game in like a number of years. I think maybe even ever. It was ridiculous last week, the ratings. They're going to want to bounce back. They're going to get the victory here. But expect Jameis Winston to continue to give the Bucks problems um, as to whether or not he wants to, or whether or not they want him to be the franchise quarterback moving forward. Cincinnati Bengals, they're traveling to L.A., taking on the L.A. Chargers. Yikes. Uh, speaking of injuries, okay, we were talking about the Washington Redskins earlier. How about the Cincinnati Bengals? Now, Jeff Driscoll, he's starting. Now, A.J. Green is out for the year. And, yes, Tyler Boyd has been a great receiver this year for the Bengals. But, man, losing A.J. Green hurts. The Bengals are done. Hopefully, this is going to begin to be the beginning of the end here for Marvin Lewis. I mean, the beginning of the end. Hopefully, this is the end. Okay, I feel like the beginning of the end was, like, eight years ago at this point. Hopefully, this is the end, the true end for Marvin Lewis. Let's get him out of here. Let's try again. Don't <laughs> keep you Jackson. Don't promote Hugh Jackson either. Let's start over, please. Bring someone out of house Cincinnati, please. They're done. Give me the Chargers to win this game at home. Next, give me the Denver Broncos. They're child in San Francisco taking on the 49ers. And uh-oh. Okay, now there is a belief that's floating around out there that the Denver Broncos are back. Okay, and that they're wild card contenders and look out for the Denver Broncos. First of all, I didn't buy into that. 
but I definitely he ain't buying into that after today. As Emmanuel Sanders appears to have torn his Achilles, he's out for the season, and oh wait a minute, this Denver Broncos team traded away Demarius Thomas only a couple of weeks ago. Who the hell are they gonna throw to? They got Cortland Sutton, who, by the way, okay, now this guy has been progressing. This guy has been improving. Okay, I'm looking out for this guy. I think he's gonna be great next year. But, okay, this year we're relying on him to be your number one now, and then outside of that, you have nothing. Okay, in the receiver core, you have nothing. I can't even tell you who you have. I, I don't know who they have. I'm sorry. I know they have Jeff Hurman, the tight end, and look, they still have a powerful running game with Philip Lindsay and Royce Freeman, but man, how are they going to move the football consistently? Now, they're going to San Francisco. San Francisco's not shown the ability, and Kyle Shanahan has shown the ability, although they're still bad. They've shown the ability to sneak up on teams, uh, to score on teams, and to have better outings than you might expect. Give me the 49ers and Nick Mullins at the helm to upset the Denver Broncos here because, again, I think with his shock and all the Emmanuel Sanders being taken out, this guy had 860 receiving yards. He was on pace for like 11, 1,200 receiving yards this season. Him being taken out of this offense only a couple weeks after trading with Mayor Thomas. How will you move the football consistently? I have concerns about that. Give me the 49ers to win this game in San Francisco. Detroit Lions are challenging to Arizona, taking on the Arizona Cardinals. And look, man, I don't want to pick this game. But the Lions have had their troubles in Arizona. Uh, every time I see them go to Arizona, I feel like they lose. I have to go back and look at the history. But I just, just in my feeling, picking these games for the past number of years, I feel like I've seen this matchup and they've lost every time. The Cardinals aren't very good. But somehow they're able to go and beat Green Bay last week. So I don't know what's going on with this football team. I mean, they're a football team that's able to lose uh, 45 to 10 to the Denver Broncos who are coming to their house. Okay, so I don't know what's going on. Uh, give me the Lions because I feel like they're not really like a 4 and 12. 5-11 team. They should win at least six games, right? And this should be one of the six that they win. So I'll give the Lions to win this game, but very begrudgingly do I make that pick. Next game we have the Pittsburgh Steelers at the Oakland Raiders. And Steelers fans, I told you, look, I really want y'all, I really do, I really want y'all to go to the Super Bowl because at least I'd have one of my Super Bowl picks in terms of participants correctly because I had Steelers versus Vikings. And right now, it looks like we're not going to have neither, okay? I look like a complete baboon, baboon. I look like baboon foster right now ridiculous so I'd love to believe it but man I just I'm still not buying into it right now the way you guys are looking this season However, you're going to Oakland, okay? And there ain't nothing better right now than going to Oakland, okay? You just go over there, you know, go ahead and check out the Bay, go to a Warriors game or two, you know, have some fun up there. Go go to Apple headquarters, go to Amazon. You know, go, 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 go see what's going on in the Silicon Valley and then go with the Raiders. That's what you do out there in NorCal, okay? Because you ain't got to worry about losing to the Oakland Raiders. Give the Steelers to win this game in Oakland. Next game, we have the Philadelphia Eagles. They're trapped in Dallas, taking on the Dallas Cowboys and NFC. East fashion, a nice battle here between NFC East mediocre teams. Oh, I will give the Cowboys credit. Okay, they're looking better. They're 75, they're looking better. Will that continue? Now, actually, I have an inclination. I have a feeling. Okay, some intuition here. The Eagles are going to win this game. But I just cannot go against the Cowboys' recent track record. They've won four straight games. They're looking improved. Um, and they're looking, especially defensively, like they could, you know, potentially make some noise in the playoffs. Okay, just a little. Not too much Cowboys fans. Let's not get excited. So give me the Cowboys to win this game in Dallas. Next game. You have the L.A. Rams. They're trying to Chicago, taking on the Chicago Bears. Okay, one of the things I got correct this year was that the Bears were going to be a playoff team, people. I told you that. I told you, look out for the Bears. Look out for my boy, Mitchell Trubisky. That's my boy. Okay, I love Mitchell Trubisky. I've always been on the Mitchell Trubisky bandwagon, and at last, I'm being rewarded for that. Can he get it done? I'll be rooting for him, but I just can't pick at the Rams. To me, are still just a little bit above the Chicago Bears class-wise. They're still a better team. They're still hungry for the first seed in the NFC. They still have a chance to grab it. In fact, right now, they have that positioning. They want to hold on to it. Give me the Rams to go to Chicago and get the victory here, but the Bears get it done. Now we're talking about the Bears being a serious Super Bowl contender. Minnesota Vikings at the Seattle Seahawks for the Monday Night Football game to close things out. Two NFC wildcard teams here battling it out for positioning. Again, I really want the Vikings to still make the playoffs, but when I made my message of predictions, when I went through the rest of the schedule, this was one of the games that concerned me. The Seattle Seahawks, they're playing well. Russell Wilson's playing well. They're finding their run game, their defense. It can struggle at times, but other times it can actually be quite impressive. 
the Seahawks are still a very good team and you have to credit Pete Carroll for keeping the boat afloat in Seattle. I expect that to continue. Give me the Seattle Seahawks to beat the Vikings here in Seattle. I was not impressed with the Vikings performance last week against the Patriots. So with that said, we move on to my guarantees of the week. And we did struggle there last week. We went two and three last week for my guarantees and I still can't believe it. I mean, where were the Indianapolis Colts? I mean, where were they? And I was hoping that at least, you know, the Browns could cover the, it was like I think they're minus six and no they're plus six it could they couldn't even do that and we, we just and then we had the lines plus ten they were in position they're only down by seven and then somehow they let up a late touchdown to the Rams and we blow it so we're two or three let's bounce back let's bounce back let's get better let's do it now let's start with the Bucks plus eight okay the Bucks could win this game I don't think so but they could win this game you know again Davis Wiss is playing better okay and we saw them beat the Saints week one give me eight points against the Saints yes they're coming off a 10 days rest but eight points a divisional matchup i love eight points in a divisional matchup give me the bucks there speaking of that Miami dolphins plus seven and a half i aforementioned this i love this line i've seen the dolphins compete against new england in miami and even in new england okay from time to time i see that i see them doing it again there okay in this upcoming matchup as ryan Tannehill is playing all right okay i know a lot of Dolphins fans want to move on from Tannehill. I would move on mainly because he can't stay healthy, but in terms of play, he's still all right. He just can't stay healthy right now. That's his biggest problem to me. Rams minus three. You know, I feel confident about this. Although I've been a Chicago Bears stand all season, although I've been a Mitchell Drabisky stand all season, I, I just see the Rams going to Chicago and just getting it done. I mean, I, I did, that's just what I see. The Rams are always able to elevate to that next level. Whatever is required for them to win a football game, they're able to do it for the most part. I mean, obviously, they have two losses on the season for a reason. Okay, but for the most part, that's what they're able to do. I mean, obviously, they have one loss on the season to the Saints for a reason, right? They weren't able to do it then. But for the most part, if they need 35, they'll put up 35. Even if we get, even up against this vaunted Bears defense, right? There's no defenses anymore in the NFL that are that vaunted that you cannot put up 30 points on them. Any defense in the NFL, you can't put up 30 points on them. The Rams will go that extra mile. The Rams will win this game by more than three points to me. Lions minus two and a half. Again, I feel good about the Lions here. Not great, but I mean, again, they're like a six win team and this should be one of those six wins. You know, the Cardinals coming off a win, they'll be a little too cocky. Hopefully they should be able to get it done. So give me the Lions here minus two and a half. And then give me the Seahawks minus three. Again, after the Vikings performance last week, man, they really got dominated by the Patriots last week. That concerned me on the road there. They're struggling on the road. I expect that to continue in Seattle, Seattle gets the W there over three points. So with that said, those end my guarantee tees and those end my NFL Week 14 picks and predictions. What are your picks and predictions? Comment down below. I want to know if you enjoyed the video. Make sure to like, comment, and most importantly, to subscribe. And until next time, this has been MJ of Sports Fan Entertainment, and I'm out. See you all later.